Now then, how are you doing? So, uh, I haven't built an old fort quite a while, but uh, Mojo sort of windled a little bit. Thanks for joining me. Uh, and uh, I needed something to uh, sort of get me get me going again. Uh, because uh, big misconception in that uh, you see people on Facebook come up and say, oh, you know, my mojo's gone. And people come along and they say, build something simple. Uh, get back into your comfort zone and all that sort of stuff. And what I tend to find is that the uh, best thing for to reinvigorate my mojo is actually just to walk away. Sorry, I need to clean the glasses. Uh, it's just to walk away, uh, which I, I, I didn't do, but I did do at the same time, because that makes sense. Uh, for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, uh, and then James says to me, you know, I've got a Euro fighter that you can have, Mark. Uh, I'll send you that up, mate, and have a bash at that if you want. So I did. Now, I've built this one before, uh, and I will put a couple of pictures up. Uh, the last one that I did was the Seek and Destroy scheme, uh, which was an old grey bird, Fifty Shades of Grey, if you remember. If you've watched that video, that's two years on. And if I remember, I will put the link in the description down at the bottom. Uh, so he sent me the same kit up, uh, and Sean at SGS Models got me the uh, Blackjack Deckle Pack from Extra Deckle. Uh, and I thought, yeah, you know, why not? Let's have a go. I do like to build a fast jet, as you know, tornadoes and ATMs and all that kind of thing. Uh, and having built the kit before, uh, yeah, let's let's have a bash. So first thing we're going to do, uh, I think this video is going to come in one, two, three, maybe four parts. First of all, we're going to build it. Okay, so, <coughs> so building it then. Got my glasses back on now. Building it now then. Let me just have a... So, uh, same video uh, literally as last time. Uh, uh, and I had to watch it back over and over because uh, it's, it's sort of like just to remind myself uh, of, of what it all entailed. Okay, so on my screen you can see that I've got the instruction book and a big wire and all sorts of things. I don't like that view. Do we like that view? Let's get this view back on. Let's get this view back on. Okay. So as I fly through instructions, left myself plenty of, plenty of space up here. Uh, hopefully you can hear me all right. Okay, so... Revel 1 in 48 Euro Fighter. Uh, it does come as the Baron Spirit kit uh, and the extra decal uh, blackjack decal. That's a separate pack. So, first flash of picture up then. So, we're going to start off with seats one, two, three, four parts. Uh, lots of color call outs there. Uh, and lots of fiddly bits as well. Se section one, stage two is uh, putting your bang handle on, no problem. Uh, stage three, so stage three straight away. If I do remember, obviously your seat drops in. Uh, it gives you a colour call out for what you want to do. Uh, but the decal pack, the, the raised detail is such uh, that if you want to put the decals on that are supplied with the kit, you've got to sand that raise detail off uh, because even the strongest setting solution will not pull it down okay as far as the decals go for the office they're a little bit bland uh, and i'm pretty sure that you can get aftermarket step four putting your heads up and your console in at the front stage five little grommet as said before right at the front for your canards uh, step six is opposite that uh, and don't forget to put them in, otherwise you've got uh, wobbly can have Stage 7, there's a little piece right at the back, B18. Uh, and 30 grams of weight at the front if you want to have it uh, wheels down. Step 8, uh, undercarriage uh, housing and everything, landing gear housing, all that uh, comes together quite nicely. Uh, you can paint it all, build it all, paint it separately, whether it wash it, whatever you want to do. And again, because I've gone wheels up on this particular bird, didn't need to do any of that, although I did build it, uh, but I didn't go into any great detail. Uh, stage nine uh, is intakes. And again, on the previous video, I did have a moan and a groan uh, that piece H26A, 
uh, he, he's supposed to be the blades on the inside uh, that, that suck all the uh, the air in, uh, and they're just so utterly bland. It's unbelievable. It's uh, if you can, in fact, if I remember uh, when I when I put the instructions on, uh, if I can remember the sequence in which I'm doing it, I will try and make some of these pictures a little bit bigger. Steps ten, step ten didn't matter to me because obviously. Being the uh, blackjack scheme, it's armor, armorless, armor. Look, it's ain't got no missiles on it, <laughs> right? Uh, so uh, didn't need to drill holes out for that. Step eleven, made me send chuckle. Uh, step eleven, putting that uh, undercarriage housing in, uh, and your front end as well. Uh, step twelve, front plate. Uh, a few side, side, little side bits there just to put the count up uh, and the nose on. Uh, and again, don't forget to add some weight if you're going wheels down. Uh, step 13 is uh, putting your front uh, front bits on, the wing piece. Uh, step 14, upper wings and uh, some kind of vortex things on, on under the wing now. So I'm going to stop you right there because obviously I've tuned into this one to see uh, the Black Jack build. Okay, so let's stop there. Pause. We have to pause. <coughs> so step 15. Yeah, you can put them together. Yeah, you can, uh, you can paint them, I suppose, for want of a better word, because the actual decal itself does not go over that detail. It's actually cut out for it. More on that later on. Uh, but step 16, if you look down in the uh, bottom corner, 15A and 15B don't attach them. I didn't. I could foresee the problem that were coming. Uh, so left them often off, off, left them off until last. Uh, and you'll thank me for that one. Step 17, uh, the little uh, actuators for the air intakes, which is B58 and B59, don't put them on yet either. Right at the very end, because they're positionable uh, and they will break off. Okay. Hopefully you've tuned into this video because you've seen the thumbnail and you've said, oh, I I've got that in my stash. I want to see how it goes. All right. Uh, step 18 uh, and 19 is the two pods on the end of the wing. Uh, step 20 is the spine on the back end. Uh, and let me just have a look. And behind the cockpit as well, it's some kind of electrical system on there. Step 21 is putting your cans onto your burners. Uh, and, and again, a very, very simple affair. Uh, too simple in my opinion. Uh, step 22 then right through to undercarriage exactly what i said on the last video i can't possibly comment because i've gone wheels up uh the i can come back into step 31 because if you look at step 31 you've got your undercarriage doors now i said last time when you come to put these on because of the funny shape that it is it, it doesn't exactly conform uh, and when you're trying to press a little part in, the other end sort of pops up. Uh, and the way that I got around that was to put some blow tack inside there, enough to be able to press that on so that I could touch, uh, put, put, put a touch of glue down one side, knowing that I, if I held the other side long enough, uh, it's a conformance. Step, step, same for step 32, it's exactly the same on the other end. Uh, so blue tech in the undercarriage housing. There were a little bit of shaving and scraping to do to make that fit. Uh, and again, I will come back to that because uh, ultimately with this being a black coloured aircraft, a little bit of disappointment there. 33, uh, putting your cans in, you don't need to do that yet because there's nothing restricting those going in uh, a little bit later on. Uh, and part 78B, uh, and uh, 51B, uh, you can leave them off as well because they've got snap off written all over them. <coughs> step 34. 
step 34 is your air break. And again, on the last video, I said that I'd watched videos myself previously uh, and there was some quite a, a lot of meat to take out from underneath that air brake uh, to make it fit if you're going to go for air brake closed, which I did on this particular bird again. So yet again, loads and loads of uh, filing and sanding to get that to fit flush. Uh, 35, uh, that is for canopy open or closed. Uh, no great drama there. The canopy, actually, at one point, I did think whether it were going to be touch and go, whether the two sections would meet and fit. Uh, but I did sort of manage to get that sorted. Uh, 36 is uh, air refueling probe, whether you're going to have that in or out. Uh, obviously, I've got mine in. 37, uh, again, putting some kind of little uh, airflow type thing on there. I don't even know what it is. Uh, but you can certainly stick those on 38. Definitely leave step 38 off. Uh, you don't need those. And again, if you remember back to the last video, I did put those on previously, all snapped off. Uh, 39 onwards, then can't really comment because, like I've said, I have not put any armament on this build. But if you want to know about the armament, again, I will try and put the link in the description for the last build that I did on this particular one. Uh, which was the uh, Seek and Destroy version. Uh, as far as pulling it together is concerned, I did take some photos. And I'm going to say now exactly what I said on the last time that I built this. There are some definite areas that will throw a, a novice modeler uh, and that will test a decent modeler uh, and, and, and be still quite the challenge for somebody that, that kind of knows what they're doing at the same time. The the wing fit on your front edge, uh, and I haven't even mentioned that yet, the wing fit is, uh, well, it's a 6 out of 10 at best because it's it's literally square peg and round all with that one. It's you, You've got a lot of sanding to do uh, because there's a lot of material to take off to get that uh, upper and lower section anywhere near conforming and fitting nicely. Now, obviously, you can clamp it, tape it, and, and you can pull it all in, uh, but the work that you have to do before that is, is absolutely massive. The air intake area is not easy. It's not great. It's, it's definitely not. Azulkimora, P51, P47, where you're having to build the chassis and one thing or another. It, it's same as the Revel Tornado. The, the certain parts that you look at it and, and it's trying to it's trying to fit on an axis that's got uh it, it's got a little bit of outward elevation on it, but this this side needs to conform flat and this side, and then it needs to angle out, sort of like that. And it's almost like you have to make the best of a worse thing there because three 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 angles that you're trying to marry up just does not work. So, again, I think they've put that in for parts count. Wings, uh, air brake definitely needs some work on it. Look, it's testing. It's, it's testing. It, it goes together relatively quick. But it's like this this particular kit has been designed specifically for wheels down, air brake open, and probably canopy open as well, if I'm absolutely honest, because again, the meat, the meat is not absolutely fantastic. So you've got three three things there. I suppose really if you built it and you said, Well, actually, I'm gonna have air brake open, wheels down, and my canopy open. Uh, you won't encounter half of these problems that you do if you have all those particular components closed up or, you know, shut off. <coughs> so building the bird, even though it throws up problems, it, it can be done uh, in a relatively short space of time. I want to say I want to score it out of 10 for a build. 
for ease of build and for fit and flash and ejector pin marks and having to sand stuff and, you know, scoring it out of 10, 10 obviously being perfect, one being absolutely just throw it in the bin. But it's neither either. It's not one or 10. So let's cut it down to middle. Is it five? Is it is it any worse than a five or is it better than a five? Or is it a five? Five out of 10. A five out of 10 where you are encountering problems that are... Uh, and, and again, you know, the, the more sort of like, mm, those kind of problems, oh, for God's sake, those kind of problems. Uh, getting get, getting stuff uh, in a in a pre-build review and saying, oh, this piece looks nice and this looks great, da -de da you'll try and put them two pieces together that just don't want to work. Uh, and, uh, and it sort of like conjures up a, oh, for, it conjures up that kind of feeling. So there are four or five of those feelings in this particular kit. Uh, for a 148 jet fighter, you don't really want four or five of them. You might want one, uh, but definitely not four or five. Okay, so it, it, it's a five. It's a, it's a five out of ten. I asked on last video, I asked on this video, would I build it again? You've got to consider, I think I built about 15, 16 of these Revel Tornadoes. Uh, you know, but this is this is number three. I'm pointing here because this is where it is. Uh, this is number three on the Euro Fighter. I built one about six years since a splinter scheme, which I just made up, but I was just getting back into hobby. I did the uh seek and destroy version that's two years since, and I didn't even realize it was that long. Uh, and you think, well, you've learned your lesson, haven't you? Uh, but, you know, with James sending it up to me in the post and saying, go on, mate, have a go, mate, reinvigorate yourself. Patch jet, lovely, yeah, go on. But it, it still only comes out at a five, comes out to five or ten. And you sat there and you go, hang on a minute, I've got I've got this image up in stash. Uh, box art looks brilliant. I've, I've got the decal pack, I've got this. Listen, fill your boots, right, fill your boots. But at the end of the day, don't go into it thinking, I'll knock this out. Because you won't. Uh, no, no, you won't. No, no. Okay. Five out of ten. So now it's built. Let's paint it. <laughs> back, back on. Paint it. Let's paint it for God's sake. Blackjack bird is obviously black. Right, and there are certain things with black paint that are crucial to know when you are building a plastic model kit. Okay, and ultimately that comes down to how good the parts are at fitting and how much work is required to do the sanding and flush fitting because if you've got two ill-fitting parts and you need to do a little bit of sanding let me tell you black paint shows every single scuff mark that you can imagine on the kit okay so where you are oh that's not quite right i'll just give that a little bit of a sand which ordinarily you would do but on a black painted bird, all those tiny little scuffs show up. How do you get around that? So, uh, again, it comes down to chuffing hell. I've got this kit to me. Stack. Right, listen. Number one, when you're building it, try and make the part. I know this is going to sound really stupid, right? But try and make the parts as good fitting as you possibly can. Well, well, I do that like, anyway, Mark. It's not like I just like go, yeah. you know, I do a bit more than that. Yeah, well, I do. I've turned some pretty good work out, right? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that try try and get them to fit as, as good as you can because for simple reason being, as soon as you introduce a sanding stick, and I'm talking I started at 800 grit, went to 1,000, 
went to 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 and 7,000, which you normally retain for sand and canopies, which I had to do again on this. Uh, and even once I'd sort of, I'm talking about polishing sticks now, when, when, you, when you're polishing plastic, like the undercarriage area, trying to get scratches out and, and they won't come out even with a polishing stick. And for want of a better word, I'm not going to start introducing Tamiya polishing compound to goddamn plastic to take scuffs out. So be careful, be careful. Okay. So primed it in painting. Let's talk about the paint job. So I did, I, I, I primed it in black. I actually primed it in Mr. Surfacer. Primed it in Mr. Surfacer. Uh, and I used the aqueous black surfacer, which is that one. Primed it in that. Oh, Matt, put that back up. I didn't see it, mate. Where the chuffing hell did you get that from? That's what I got. I'll hold it there for you for a second. Okay. Look, my life. Uh, I primed it in that, and then I painted it in MRP black. Sorry for noise. I've just got primer all over me, chuffing some. Not prepared, am I? Pr uh, painted it in MRP black, which was uh, MRP 005. Uh, and the beauty of that paint is it's very, very glossy, so you don't particularly need a gloss coat to put your decals on uh, yes i did i did of course i did but but you don't need to primed it all in black uh, and again because i'd watched previous videos right it's not cheating it's helping uh, i did notice some of the lads had said oh be careful on your front canards because the front canards uh the actual white that you can see there uh, it does not come as part of the decal you've got to paint it white so primed my canards in black and then sprayed them all in white, completely in white, uh, and then just touched up the edges. I'm going to put it here. Touched up the edges uh, with the blacks and greys that you needed to see. As far as the spine and the tail are concerned, uh, yeah, still primed them in black, but I didn't put as much primer down. Uh, it was literally the finest mist coat uh, and even once I've done that, I still give that uh, a sand with a, a little bit of a sanding sponge that I've got, <coughs> which is, it's got literally nothing on it. It's got nothing left on it at all. Uh, and it's uh, it's very flexible. Look, it is a proper sponge. Uh, and, and you can, th there's no tonic. There's no tonic. So I did give that a, a little bit of a rub, a little bit of a, a little bit of a sweat off, if you will. Just to get, make sure that there were no bubbles, no sort of bubbly areas, uh, and then get it, uh, then get it a white, uh, mask it off, obviously, then get it a white, uh, and so that I could put the red down. You, you come to a dilemma: do I paint the red tail, mask that off, and the spine, then paint the black, or do I paint it all black? Listen, it's up to you, right? It's up to you. What I did was I painted it all. I painted it black after the primer coat and I've done the tail and the spine in white. I painted I painted the, the body around it in black. I'm having to chuff and think now. I painted the body around it in black, which is down the sides. So that left all that and the tail in white because it were a lot easier to put masking tape down that onto this surface. It was a lot easier to, to put masking tape all the way up here and then obviously put bags and stuff over here uh, than it would have been to do the other way around. So, uh, and then you take your masking tape off and uh, and there you go. Painted the nose in grey, then started to put the uh, accent colours on. So there's grey, there's grey on top of the tail. I need to put it there. Grey on top of the tail, there's grey down the front of the tail. Uh, there's some grey along the wings as well, and it's all it there. There's some grey on the leading edges uh, and across these parts here at the bottom, some grey. Uh, there's some grey across here 
I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. It is. You can see there's some grey all underneath, some significant greys. Uh, and that breaks up the blackbird, if you will. <coughs> That's when we started, me and Clive Rowe started having a... Oh, what do you think, Mark? More about that in a little bit. Uh, and I'll give you my thoughts. So as far as the colour scheme is concerned, black, pr predominantly black. Uh, the only thing that you do get to see on the underside, uh, because of the size of that bloody decal that, that comes with the wing, uh, is uh, is the actual spine, the actual underside itself. So all, all this particular area on the wing, don't matter whether you've primed it, painted it, glossed it, it don't matter because it's all going to get covered up. Okay. It's all going to get covered up. Let me put that back in there, out of the way, because I know what happens to my, uh, my models if I mistreat them. Uh, as far as the back end is concerned, that was painted with AK Extreme Metal blends of. We've got uh, dark aluminium, chrome, uh, gun metal, all kinds of things in there. Uh, and it's just to make it as, uh, as pleasing to the eye as you possibly can. Once it's painted, let's talk about that decal. <clears throat> Welcome to your house of pain. I posted on Facebook. It's I, I do post quite a lot on Facebook, Instagram, and chuffing TikTok. And I was chatting with James the other night, and I said uh, I, I, I've literally, you know, passed. I, I was so so infuriated with this. I said, "Pass me my pen of rage," because. I'm absolutely going to slam dunk this kit all over. But once I'd started to dissect actually what the issues were in Mark World, it turned out it was this decal. Look at me, I'm having to take a breather. <laughs> right, this. So get that in your mind. Okay, so all that, obviously you've got all the red. Now, all that part there across the tail, let me just bring that in here a little bit more. That's that's one decal. Now, you do only get what you can see there. You can see right up at top, the, the white and the blue, like an eagle's beak, and then you do get the uh, white, blue, white, red circle underneath, and it does come as one decal. Okay, how did that go on? And my solution of choice is sol and set. Set and sol. Sorry, everybody gets that, gets that wrong way around. Uh, how did it go on? I, I, I'm not saying that revel decals are thick. Well, not revel decals, other they're extra decals. I, I did have to bathe it. I did have to bathe it uh, a lot for that to conform. And then you've got all your little bits on the side, you know, your squadron insignia and your serial number and one thing or another. They all went down absolutely fine. It, it's just that it's the big ones. So both sides are right. As far as the canard decals are concerned, because, again, you watch my video, you'll watch somebody else's video. The canards, uh, the decals... The, the two videos that I'd watched, people were saying, oh, the decals are too big, right? So I cut mine out, I was trimmed them with, with my steel ruler on my cutting mat, trimmed them absolutely perfectly. So small, so small. And it's it's quite throwing because on the one hand, you're doing the best job that you can, but on the other hand, it's like, why, why would Bill and Dave say that these decals are far too big and you have to trim them down? But I'm holding mine up and they're like tiny. Why why would they say that? And you start doubting and questioning you and you all sorts of shit. Talk about absolutely everything. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about upper wing decals. Upper wing decals. There's a grey 
leading edge on your wing. Let's start there. Let's start there. And that's painted on. And when you come to apply the deco, it does not look like it goes in a straight line and follows that, right? And, and again, I'm going to try and put some pictures up, right? And I'm looking, and mine is bang on. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's bang on. But then you've got a walkway line to put on, and the walkway line does not come as a standard box standard, what you would think is a walkway line. You actually get this pack in the extra decal shade, right? And it's uh, and they've titled it Spare. Uh, you, you probably can't see it, but that, that little letter there just above the red, it says Spare. And, and all down here, you can see the tiny little walkway dots. Okay. Now, if you've tried to apply a long decal in the past, you know... <laughs> You, you, you cut it out individually as a strip. You put it into your water, which straight away means that you need a tub that's long enough because if, if you if you cut it out and sort of like dip it in and it starts to twist and conform, if you don't pull that deckel out on time, pop, if you don't pull that deckel out on time, that deckel will come to the water, come to the top of water. Uh, uh, we've all seen it. And before you know it, when you get your tweezers in and try and pull that out, 99% of the time you've lost that deckle because it's twisted, it's gone up over itself and all sorts of shit. And it's same with the application. When you are, I absolutely bathe my wing in uh, salt, set in set, the blue one. Uh, and you always know when you've got a good gloss coat on your bird because when you dip your paintbrush into the set, the blue one, and put it on, it's like it disappears. It's like, I'm sure I've just put half a bottle of set on here, and there's absolutely nothing there. Uh, that's when you know you've got a good gloss coat on. So, yeah, I, I, these are grey, and I had to use the white ones. I'm going to I'm going to offer it back up. I don't want to drop it off. Uh, and I'm hoping, if you're watching it on your telly, you'd probably see them anyway, but maybe not on your phone. Uh, I'm hoping that you can see. Let me just have a look on my big screen. You can see the walkway. Where's my finger? And it, and it goes across there, and then it comes down here. But you can see it actually crossing the blue line to the end, across the top to the wing, round that funny shape, which you have to do on both sides, and then you send it back up. And again, they are the walkway decals are not, this is number 12, this is number 8. You've, it's just... Five or six of these straight lines of straight walk decals, and you've got to cut a strip out. Bear in mind that's like a millimeter and a half wide now. Then you've got to offer it up dry, come across, put a little mark, pencil, thumb, nail, pen, whatever. Uh, and, and you've got to be quite methodical on what you're doing there, otherwise, you, you're going to bollocks that up. So, them walkway decals, not easy. Tail, top wing, once you've sold and set, once you've set and sold and you've rubbed with your cotton bud, uh, and now I'm talking about the big main union jack deckle on the top wing, it for, it, it, for me, it did go down. It's absolutely, it has gone down. But the wing, the upper wing is so boring. Uh, there's, there's no, you, you look at that, uh, again, I, I sort of relate everything to Tornado. You look at the top of a Tornado wing and it's got, you know, the, the flaps and slats and the, absolutely everything on it and there's a ton of detail on them. Whereas these, it's just like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to put my uh, Microsoul down, the red one, because I want all that detail to show through that decal. What detail? There ain't none. No, there ain't none. There ain't none. So you're using your soul as literally just like a sucking down agent, then aren't you? Just to get it to conform to your wing, so it will do. Okay. <laughs> get rid of that. And then I, I left mine a day because I know that we uh, a big deckle, especially, you can start doing some more deckling somewhere else. 
you're turning it upside down, you're holding it, one thing, another, da da da. When you come to spin it back round, it, you've moved what you've done. Uh, so after actually, after I've done the top wing decals and the tail decal, the roundels, the squadron insignia, the squadron identification number, I didn't do canards because I left them off. Once I've basically done all the top, I gloss coated it twice, uh, ready for some kind of weathering wash that's coming next to make sure that once I turned it upside down to start and even think about doing these bottom decals i knew that my top stuff would be absolutely rock solid okay and then we move on don't we we move on to arguably the worst decal on the planet as far as adhesion ripping everything is concerned number one that decal is absolutely enormous and again i'm going to put a picture up okay so what you can see there it literally comes as one piece, apart from the bit that goes on the flaps at the bottom end. Now, if you remember, I did say, so I'm going to point, uh, I'm actually going to point in advance. I did say, where am I going to, I've got a blank screen here. I'm going to say, I did say that leave that off and I'm going to leave my finger there, right? Leave that off. Now I've got to make sure that I marry that picture up correctly. Uh, because... The decal is best applied by cutting it. And I'm just going to try and fathom out where. Right, so. Where's my pen? Let me get a pen. Let me get, in fact, here, look. I'm just going to use my file. So. So this little part here, this on the flaps, this little part, it's like a rectangle. And I'm doing this back to front and I can't see my head. That comes as a separate part, which means from here, all the way across here, all the way up and all the way down is one massive decal. Now, what I did, I'm going to fold it in half. What I did was I cut it. I cut it to make it that much easier. So where that, that's the part that I've said to you, don't put that on, right? Don't put that on. I cut the decal there and there so that it will literally fit in this piece and then this piece will separate. Is that best practice? I've got absolutely no idea. I'll tell you what mine did, though. The first side went down all right. But the second, it's like therapy, this. The second side ripped, which is why, in the end, I've actually got the bird level like that on a wooden block frame. Because once a decal rips, especially on a jagged rip, if you cut a decal dry, not being in water, yeah, you can get two. Once you put them back together, that's less of a problem. But if you've got a decal that's wet on a body that's ripped, that's got a jagged edge, to conform those two jagged edges back into some kind of formality, nightmare, absolute ball ache. Cotton buds out, rolling, rolling, rolling for what seemed a goddamn eternity because the decal is so huge. And then blue roll, it even got to where I'm, I'm putting blue roll swabs around my finger and I'm doing that, <laughs> I'm doing that, right, <laughs> to try to get some of this liquid out, which... You must put on beforehand, otherwise you're not going to be able to play with your decal. So, worst of two evils. And eventually, I did get them to conform. Uh, but they're absolutely shocking, the, the decals themselves. Uh, near mine scored in Kitty 5 out of 10. That decal pack, that's a nightmare. Get ready for that. Joe Fidel, Mark, I've got, I've, I've got this kit in my stash, and I've got them decals in my, cash, in my stash. But listen... Fill your boots, have a go. Uh, 
you know, build it, do it, and then leave me a comment on here saying I don't know what you're talking about, they get it with a piece of piss. Uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, if everybody commented saying that, Mark, you're on drugs, mate. You haven't got a clue what you're doing. I think I'd have to go out and buy it and build it again just to, like, hammer home the fact that they are toss. Okay, or maybe it's my building skills. Once the decals were on, uh, that underneath, the underneath took two and a half days to decal up. And that's from first adhesion, measuring up, cutting, rolling, blue rolling, microsol, the red one, to get it to suck down over and over. Then try to sort the rips out that just kept happening all the time uh it took took uh, well two and a half it took three days uh for, for both sides and eventually they didn't turn out too bad look at me screwing my face up i'll tell you what if them body language people watch my videos are like lying shit uh he's saying oh yeah uh, oh yeah the brilliant <coughs> i digress once the bottom ones were on, uh, and I'm chatting with Paul, and I'm pulling my goddamn hair out and saying it's it's cracked, it's split, it's this, it's that. Uh, just get it off your bench, Mark. F finish it, mate. Finish it. Get it off your bench. So that was the ultimate goal. Canards, like I said, uh, and and then that's that. I left them off until until last. I painted the weather and, and deckled them separately. And then after the paint job and all the decals are on, uh, it's gloss coated in MRP high gloss, uh, which is my go-to at the moment because I always chuck and change my mind with my glosses. Uh, that's an MRP 048, which is that one, probably back to front. Uh, through my Bart Sharp airbrush, my original Bart Sharp airbrush, because it's got a bigger needle in, uh, crank the pressure up and it just absolutely goes down flawlessly. Beautiful. And then after all that, weathering. So, weathering, 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 weathering a blackbird is uh, tricky because. When you look at Google images that don't look particularly overweathered, I mean, it's a, it's the RAF display bird. It, it's going to have a team of boys and girls polishing it and making sure it's absolutely looking the bee's knees 24 hours a day. But the difference is, is that If you if you make if you make a, a scale model, this is just my opinion. If you make a scale model look brand new, it looks very toyish. So you've got to put a little bit of variation in your colours. I'm not saying that you have to go to town, but you, you do have to put a little bit in. So it has got some companion lines, and I'm a bit dubious, and oh, you know. What shall I use? I have actually got some flory grey. So I'll put a bit of that into recesses. Left it, looked at it a bit. Oh, I thought, Chuffer, now that looks a bit aggressive, does that? It's too much. So wiped that off uh, and went in with, uh, I've got a, 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 another grey panel line, but it's a bit darker. Uh, trying to make it look, it look something like, and I think in the end, uh, I, I made some uh, grey uh, wash up with some oil paint and actually went with that and then used the oil paint as a foundation as well for some stippling on some different colours. Uh, pictures up now. The underneath was weathered. I did do the fuel tank because you do see that on this particular bird. Uh, but. I'm going, to, I'm going to pause then even longer. Uh, but uh, I did do the underneath. But because if you remember, I, I had the last one up, up, sort of like, like that. And I wanted to do the same for this one, but I can't because underneath is just so shit. So that's why it's 
across level. <coughs> it's not going to win any trophies in this one. Uh, and, and the self-satisfaction on it, on the one hand, I'm thoroughly disappointed. It's killed me mojo, completely dead. Why? Because it's it's uh, not it's not uh, a kit that uh, is is. Uh, I don't want to sound like a kit snob. It's just not doing it for me anymore. I mean, I need more. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, quite happy that I've managed to do it and turn it out, and it looks looks all right. It looks kind of all right. Okay, for what it is. You can pick it up from between 20 and 25, 26 quid. Oh, Mark, yeah, what a twat. You've really put me off buying it now. No, definitely not. Would I build it again? Well, I won't because I've done three now. Uh, but would I recommend it? Yeah, I still would, just because it's got certain little issues. You've got to remember that for that amount of money, a 1 in 48 bird, if you use the decal pack kit, decals, you might have a lot more success than I had with this particular blackjack scheme. And for the amount, the, the cost of the money that it is, it's not too bad. It's when you get to a certain point in your building that you demand more, you expect more, and you want more, and, and you are literally demanding that parts fit better, decals go down better, uh, parts are crisper, They've got more detail, more definition. When you get to that stage in model building, you know, would I recommend it? Definitely not. Stay away. <laughs> Stay away from it. But it's a quick weekend. I'm new to modeling. I've only been doing it six months, 12 months. Da -da -da. <coughs> I fancy a fast jet, Mark. One in 48 euro fight to make. What do you reckon? Yeah, have a go. Have a go. It's not end at world. It's not end at world. Uh, and then review it two years later and then review it again two years later and build it again and see what you think. Okay. And that, 47 chuffing minutes. That'll just about wrap it up for that. Uh, beam through build sequence, paint sequence, deckling sequence, and weathering sequence. Okay. And these are finished pictures that I've either just started putting up or I'm going to put up now. Okay, gonna clear the bench. Let's let's check that off. Let's check it off. What are we gonna do next? I've got a choice. Uh I can either get my tack and fork truck back out and have another bash at that. No. I've got a donated A10, which is one in 32. I've got my tram, my A6 intruder. But the one that I think I'm gonna go for, and I said it later, said it earlier, is my MAS. Torpedo attack bolt from Italy because I've got one, James has got one, and Paul's got one. Okay, so that's what's coming up next. The bolt. Let's have a bash at a bolt. Okay. I've done buses, bikes, jets, props. Let me have a go at a bolt. Only thing I haven't done yet. Well, I have done a car, but get back to that. Uh, live streaming tonight. Uh, unless you're watching this on a later day, and then I'm not live streaming tonight. Uh, but if you're watching it now, live stream tonight, hopefully with me and Paul and James, and we're going to be talking about our workspaces, and we want some hints and tips because Paul has moved house, uh, which means he's got a brand new shed, uh, and he wants all our help and hints and tips uh, on how to lay it out all right and make things, you know, Different, maybe how you do it is different to how I do it, etc. etc. Okay, so tune in for that, and uh, that's live at eight o'clock. Uh, and we'll see how we go from there. Okay, review over, cup of tea time. Catch you later. Cheers. <laughs>